This is an electric tapping arm. This is one of my favorite tools in my shop. It's probably one of the fastest return on an investment that I've ever made on a new machine. And I'm gonna show you and tell you all about it. So aside from making YouTube videos, I also run a fabricating shop here. And one of the jobs that I get often is jobs to tap, uh, drill and tap metal parts and kind of like small machinist jobs. Um, I make a lot of art for artists and one of the things that those parts usually need is a drilled and tapped hole. So I have a bunch of equipment in my machine shop that's for that. I have Tapmatic, tapping heads, I have a tapping station, I have hand taps and dies, all those different things. And if you've ever tapped threads in metal, you know that it can be a harrowing experience if you don't have the right stuff. Breaking taps can ruin a part and it can really be frustrating. You may have seen other tapping arms like this, and they're usually pneumatic. Uh, there's a bunch of different brands out there, and I've had a pneumatic tapping arm before, but I found out about this electric one from my friend Cliff Dufton, and I thought this would be a really amazing tool for my shop. It turns out it is an amazing tool. It was about $1,200 when I bought it with all the stuff that I got for it, and honestly, I made that money back within the first month of having it, and at this point, it's definitely pulled in over $10,000 worth of business in the job that it's helped me actually get done. I'm gonna bring you in and show you some of the features and show you how it works and why I think you might want one of these in your shop if you do any tapping. So this is a digitally controlled servo motor system. Now you've got the tapping arm here and it's on basically a gas strut arm so we can move around the table. And the reason that it's on this arm is you'll notice the head always stays perpendicular to the table or parallel basically to the column. So no matter where I go on the table, it's parallel and I can actually just tap and drill anywhere on the table without having to move whatever the part is. So if I'm working on a large part, this is really useful. And also the head can pivot and twist and I'll show you that a little bit later. By pressing these buttons on the handle, you actually get the end of the spindle to move Right now it's going forward and there's a button above it that brings it in reverse. And all the settings are adjusted here on this little screen. I'll show you what this screen does. So over on this screen, you've got a bunch of options. Um, one of the things I was worried when I bought this was if it was all gonna be in metric because this is a Chinese machine, but it does have English and it does have standard inch threads. And the reason that you wanna get to these is because there's actually a, a smart torque setting uh, that will actually stop the machine if it feels a certain amount of torque and reverse it. Now it's got a bunch of different things you can do. All of the um, distances are in metric, they're in millimeters, and it sets the tapping pitch uh, and it sets the torque setting based on the tap. Now this is a M3 to M16 or basically a 632 to half inch capable machine with its size motor. There are larger taps in this list, but this machine really shouldn't do anything that much bigger than a half inch tap. I have done a three quarter and a seven eighths inch tap on this, but it was a little bit rough. Now it has a manual and an automatic setting, and that's basically for your tapping de depth. If I set this to automatic, and I set the tapping depth to let's say 10 millimeters, and I bring the tapping head over. So with that automatic mode, if I were to push the down button on the tapping arm, the tap will go in to 10 millimeters, then it will stop and it will reverse out. And those speeds for its in and out are set over on the tapping and return speed, which is pretty cool. So if you've ever tapped before, a lot of times if you cut a tap, you can return basically back out in reverse at a faster speed. So if I was gonna tap, let's say quarter inch, I would set my tapping speed to probably 150 RPMs in and 250 RPMs out. And then if I had this automatic tapping setup thing going, it would automatically tap to a depth of 10 millimeters and then it would return. And it will also show you the cycles. I usually keep mine on manual and on manual, basically what you do is you push the button in here, it goes down, you push the button and it goes back. So there's two little buttons right in here, in and out. Now there's a lot of settings in here. There's a deep hole operation, which I actually think is really cool. What this does is it cycles down 
and then backs out a little bit and then cycles down, backs out a little bit and cycles down, basically breaking the chip as it goes. I'll show you how that works at that 10 millimeter depth. Now obviously you could manually go forward and reverse, but with this deep hole operation, it really helps out. There's some other stuff on here, which is like the motor load, which you can watch and you can see the torque that's being put onto the actual machine, which is pretty cool if you wanna kinda of study that. But generally I just use it in manual mode. I do my tapping, my forward and reverse, and I pull it out. This little screen covers it so no coolant or anything gets on the touchpad. Now the way this thing stays parallel all the way, you know, all around the table is really cool, but you can also tap in kind of different orientations because this entire head can rotate. So let's say you had a really long piece of tube and you needed to tap the end of it and it was so tall that you couldn't kind of get into it from the bottom and maybe you didn't have a lathe. What you can do by loosening a couple of Allen key screws, some socket head screws on this, is you can actually turn the head and you can have it work in a horizontal fashion. So by loosening those screws, now this thing is horizontal. And in this orientation, it's not moving straight, but by loosening this other screw here, the whole head will pivot down. And now by leaving this adjustment loose, you can basically tighten this. And you can have now a linear motion as opposed to a horizontal motion. And now this will remain parallel with the work table and you could tap the end of a piece of tube or a rod and this thing can float. So as you're going, it's moving straight and staying kind of coplanar. Now there are two other little grub screws here that can adjust the amount of kind of resistance you get on this. So you could go ahead and kind of tighten those up if you want to kind of make this a little more rigid, but the tap is honestly going to pull itself because it obviously is cutting threads and that's gonna basically guide you. Now you can adjust all these things and make them perfectly parallel, but I just think it's cool that you could tap horizontally like this because without a lathe, this would be a really difficult operation to do. And if you had a really large part, you could basically clamp this or bolt this to anything and you could get a really accurate tap with torque control, speed control, and all that stuff just with this very simple machine. Now bringing it back to parallel, does take a little bit of fine tuning, but I'll show you how I do it. So I actually pop the collet out and then I use a one, two, three block on my table to set and make sure that this thing is perpendicular with the table in both directions. So I get it a little bit snugged up, get it tight. Once I get it parallel that way, perpendicular that way, I set it the other way. So it's pretty easy to get it reset and square again. So if you go and buy one of these, you're gonna notice uh, when you're shopping for them that they're all 220 volt. Um, now they come with a cord with a European plug on them, but obviously for me in the States, I couldn't use that. So what I did was I bought a heavy gauge cord with the same little three prong adapter. This is commonly used as like a computer power cord. Uh, and I bought a 15 foot cord and I put a welder's plug on the end of it. So with this welder's plug, I can plug this into any of the 220 volt outlets in my metal shop. I have a bunch of plugs like this, but you could use any 220 volt plug, but I would recommend getting a new cord. I'll put a link to the one that I bought in the description. I just got it on Amazon. It adapts in just fine. And then you can just use the two lines in the ground in whatever plug end, and you can power the machine any way you want. So the whole arm basically rotates on this column and there's a bronze bushing here. Um, if you want to lower the whole thing, you just loosen the set screw inside this collar and very quickly you can get this thing to raise or lower.
by loosening it. Okay, just like that. That was less graceful than I wanted it to be, but it got us there. I keep it kind of in the middle. It doesn't really matter um, as long as you can get down to the part that you're trying to tap. Um, this thing will actually kind of bow pretty far below the actual base, so you don't really need to worry so much about where the height is. And if you want to take the whole thing off the column, you just take this little plastic cap off and you can lift the whole thing off. It's not super heavy. Next, let me show you the collets, how they work, and what you'll need to actually use this with standard taps. So my tapping arm came with these torsion chuck tap holders. Uh, I really couldn't get much use out of these. The only one that actually fit a metric tap that I had was the M10. Um, the way they work is there's basically a little spring plunger here on the front, and there's a square shank uh, uh, receiver in there. Basically, you put your tap in there, and then this sort of little kind of jaws go out and grab it and it keeps the tap from falling out. And then there's a series of clutch balls in here that you can adjust with this little pin wrench. And that's what's gonna allow this thing to not break the tap if it meets resistance. Like I said, these metric ones didn't really work for me. So I had to go out and I had to get some standard ones. So you're gonna to wanna to get yourself a set of ANSI, you know, standard inch or fraction tap holders if you're gonna use this machine in the States. Now I've got a couple of variants here, but this is the set that I bought. Um, these, are, these are going from 832 all the way up to half inch. Um, and if you're gonna buy these, you'll have to know that the eight, the eight size um, taps use a 532nd shank, the 10 size taps use a 316 16th, then we have quarter, 5 16 3 8 7 16 all the way up to half inch. Now again, these are the same thing. These are a clutch style collet. You push this little kind of plunger on the end and it will hold on to the tap. One of the things that you have to kind of be aware of though is that not all taps have the, the, the same shank size. So for instance here, I've got two different 3 8 inch taps. This one has a much smaller shank than this one. This one will not work in my 3 8 uh, collet. So in order to get around that, what I did was I made this little adapter. So what I made here is a little, this is a 3 8 um, driver that you'd put in a drill and I turned it down on the lathe and ground a little square kind of shank on the back so it basically mimics a quarter 20 tap and this fits perfectly in there and then I went and got these little 3 8 drive tap holders on Amazon that you could put on the end of a socket wrench and by putting that on there I basically made a universal kind of tap holder and it still has that two jaw kind of square receiver on the back so for instance, if I wanted to grab something weird, like this is a uh, uh, eighth inch pipe thread tap, I could put that in there and I'd basically have a way to hold it accurately. It's got a lot of stick out, but there is a little bit of float on it, which is what you want. And this little adapter, you know, was easy to make and it goes right in a quarter inch collet. Now, because I have two, I get to kind of keep one dedicated. The other thing that I got was I got a drill collet. So this is a JT33 shank with a collet back. There's no clutch in this one, but it was able to allow me to put a keyless chuck on it. It came with a pretty crappy keyed chuck, but with the keyless chuck, I can run a countersink so I can quickly kind of deburr the edge of holes with this, and this will also snap right into the thing. The last kind of collet that I'll show you, this is a non clutch style collar. This is a 3 8 Basically all of this does is hold the tap. It's completely kind of in, uh, inanimate in that way where if you're going to break a tap it's going to break but you do have the clutch control over on the computer and the way all of these work. So basically you've got your spindle right here and these just get snapped right up into the spindle like that and then when you want to drop them out basically just pull up on that and they pop out and they all just kind of snap in there. And it's very quick to change these out. It's very, very convenient. You can put the drill chuck on and you're good to go. Let's see it in action. So to really use a tool like this, you need a pretty sturdy work surface and you're gonna want a vise or a way to hold the work. Uh, this is just a quick acting vise. Uh, it basically slides in and out. But one of the things you're gonna wanna be aware of is you need to clamp the vise uh, in some way because the amount of torque that this thing puts out 
is honestly shocking. So if you don't have this vise clamped, you will spin it when you go to tap a piece of material. So I typically have this on another bench. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know I don't use this welding fixture table uh, for tapping. I have this bolted to the steel hot work table that I use, and I keep a vise there specifically for it. But you can see, you know, by moving this thing around and clamping it down, I could basically move this around. I could tap a part that was anywhere on the table. And that's huge, especially when you're used to using like a tapmatic on a bridge port or on a drill press, uh, where especially on a bridge port, you have to go and turn the knobs and levers to very precisely position the part. With this, since there's so much kind of forgiveness in where your actual tool is, you can really tap things kind of all over the place. So I'm gonna drill out a piece of plate, and I'm gonna put a couple different size holes in it, and then we'll use a couple different taps, and I'll show you how it works up the range. All right, so I've got a piece of plate here drilled out with a couple different hole sizes for a couple different taps. I've got a 1032, two quarter 20s, a 3 8 and a half inch. And we'll go through the process of tapping these and see how we do. So I basically just snap the collet in like that. And I've got this thing set for that 1032. We're gonna set the speed down to 75 in, maybe 100 out. And we're gonna put a little bit of tapping oil or just some general oil and let's tap this hole. So that was 75 RPM in, 100 RPM out. Probably could make the RPM out 200. And this is 3 8 inch mild steel plate. We've got ourselves a tapped hole for 1032. Now with that done, if I want to switch over to the quarter 20, but those holes actually look like they could use a little deburr. I switch over to the drill with the uh, countersink and I can do a quick deburr. I'll set my speed on that one up to the highest setting, which is 300 on this. I'll deburr all the holes while I'm at it. little small for the half inch but we got there now I can pop that off I can grab the quarter 20 tap and the quarter 20 collet snap that on a little bit of oil and then for this one I'll set my rpm to uh, 150 in and 250 out because I know it can do it and we'll tap these two holes look how fast this can be Just like that, I got two quarter 20 tapped holes through a 3 8 inch thick steel plate in seconds. I mean, come on, super easy. So moving right along, I can swap this out now and go to a 3 8 Now the 3 8 is a little bit bigger of a tap. It's gonna be cutting a bigger thread. It's gonna need more torque. I'm gonna lower my speed down to about 75 going in, and I'll put the outgoing speed at 150, which should be okay. I'm gonna tell the machine that I'm tapping 3 8 so the torque setting is in there, and then we'll put a little lubricant, and we'll tap these two holes. I'm gonna do one with the uh, flex collet with the clutch, and then one with the rigid collet, just so you can see the difference. This also has a, a spiral flute tap. This has a straight kind of like store-bought tap. Now the clutch may engage on this because this material is so thick and you'll be able to hear it if it does. 
So you hear that clicking, that's actually the clutch engaging. I think the clutch setting is a little light on this collet, but we'll see if we can get through this 3 8 plate. So what's happening is the clutch is engaging and it's not allowing this to get the necessary torque to make that tap. So what I would do is I can use a little pin wrench or I can use basically any tool that will grab those two pins and tighten this up, which is going to apply more pressure when I'm going to actually cut uh, with the tap. So let's do that and see if it makes a difference. So in order to adjust that, you have to pull this little ring out and then once that's out, you can adjust the actual clutch tension. I'm going to bring it in um, maybe two notches, three notches, see if that does it. Then you put this little retaining ring back in. And then we'll give it another try and see if it can cut this thread. So it did clutch out a little bit, but it was able to cut, and then we can remove it. And that's 3 eighths through 3 eighths. Really no problem. The next one I'm gonna do with the rigid tap holder that does not have the clutch. This is a spiral flute tap. We'll see how this one does. We'll tap, this is another 3 eighths 16. So super easy to tap it. Like I said, I could definitely adjust that clutch even heavier on this one. Uh, it has no problem doing it. The last one we've got here is a half 13. The thread quality doesn't seem as good with the spiral flute tap. I did have to use a wrench to kind of get it around there, but we got it. All right, let's do the half 13 and see how we do. Easily cut those threads. That's at 75 RPMs in, 150 RPMs out. Half 13 through 3 eighths like it was nothing. Easy. So look, this isn't a product for everyone, but for me, this has made me thousands of dollars because of the accuracy, because of the speed, I'm able to do jobs faster. And in my shop, that's really important. Um, I have every other option for tapping aside from a CNC machine that exists in the market. I have Tapmatics, I have rigid tapping machines, I have a bench that literally is set up with a, a mill head just for tapping on it. I tap on the lathe. I have all these other ways to do it. I choose to use this all the time because it's so much faster and I can move this to the work. If I have a big piece, a small piece, doesn't matter. I have a, a vise on the bench and this thing always gets the job done for me. Uh, I chose to go with this electric one versus a pneumatic. I sold my pneumatic to buy this because I can just plug it in and move it around the shop. You can also bring it to someone else's shop if I have to. And I'm working on an accessory that's going to make me not have to clamp or bolt it to the table. But you'll have to wait to see the video on that one next week. Anyway, I think this thing is great. I'll put links down in the description below. This thing cost me um, a little over $1,000 by the time I was done with the duty fees. I bought this from AliExpress. I had paid a $250 duty fee from DHL when it arrived in the States. And I think I paid $800 bucks when I first bought it. I thought I was saving myself money, but if I was going to buy this thing again, I would buy it from Amazon. And the reason is because Amazon is going to give you that customer service that you're not going to get from a seller from AliExpress. I'm pretty sure if this thing stopped working, I would just be completely out of luck and that would just kind of be a loss and a risk that I took. Uh, had I bought it from Amazon and I had a problem, I could reach out to them if it arrived damaged, any of that stuff. I also waited like a month for it to come straight from China. And all in all, I saved about $110 versus just buying it uh, from Amazon. 
The tap holders were a little hard to find, but it looks like there's a seller on Amazon that has them now, so I'll put links to all that stuff down below. Uh, shout out to my buddy Cliff Dufton for buying one of these before me and telling me all about it and kind of taking the risk. He's gotten great use out of his and I've gotten a ton of use out of mine. So if this is something that you do, if you tap stuff or if you just want to make sure you never break a tap again, honestly, I would forego buying a Tapmatic and I would save my money and I would buy one of these. Um, super accurate, super fast. And for me and my shop and my workflow, it's been nothing but, uh, but a pleasure to use. So stay tuned for the video on how I'm gonna make this thing a little more portable. Coming soon, follow me right here on Instagram if you like this kind of stuff. Leave a comment down below if this was helpful to you and I hope to see you on the next one. Thanks.